So let's um, do this next problem, sulfur dioxide. Um, so again, in these problems, I think it's probably best to go by the rule uh, least electronegativity in the middle rule. If you recall, sulfur is below oxygen, so it'll have a less of electronegativity. Okay? So sulfur, oxygen, oxygen. Just do the exact same thing as we did before. Okay? We're going to um, just put the correct amount of electrons uh, in uh, relation to the Lewis structure or the valence electron. So oxygen is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six. Sulfur also has six. Okay? But in this case, hopefully you notice, sulfur is missing two electrons. Okay? But oxygen needs two electrons, and oxygen needs two electrons, okay? So since sulfur normally could only take two electrons, and we know this compound exists, we also know that sulfur must be expanding its valence, is what we have to assume, okay? Is everybody okay with that justification? Okay, so once you get by that, once you come to terms with that, then all it is is just doing the exact same thing as we did before, okay? Just uh, like connecting bonds by um, uh, sharing electrons, okay? So in this case, this oxygen needs to complete its octet, and this oxygen needs to complete its octet. The sulfur is going to go over its octet to expand its valence, okay? So when it does that, we're going to show the double bonds here, so like that, like that. So hopefully you think that's weird that those, that sulfur is making those bonds with those electrons that are seem to be already in there. But again, why is it doing that? It's because it's expanding its valence. Okay, so it does something like that. Everybody okay with that? So double bond and double bond on each side of that uh, sulfur. But we got to also put our lone pairs in. Like that. Okay. So what would we expect the bond angle to be here? Would we expect it to be 180? No. Why not? Because we have how many electron groups? Three, right? So what would we expect the bond angle to be? 120 might be a good expectation. In fact, it should be a tiny bit less than 120. Why? Because one of those electron groups is a lone pair, and that kind of squishes the bond angle down, okay? It's not an angle that I want you to remember, but it's something that you want to think about. What should the angle be kind of around, okay? So, let's draw what the molecular structure should look like, okay? So, uh, well, first off, let's just make a table like we did before. So, number of electron groups, how many? Guys, around the central sulfur? Three. Uh, so, if I have three, what's the electronic structure called? Yeah, trigonal planar. Is the molecular structure trigonal planar? What's the molecular structure? It's got to be bent, right? It can't be trigonal planar. Why? Because it would have to have how many atoms around the central sulfur? Three. Three, right? So since it's only got two, it's got to be bent. So this is not what the molecule looks like, right? It actually looks kind of like something else, right? So it looks like
that's what the molecular structure looks like of sulfur dioxide. So is everybody okay with doing something like this? This is a molecule with expanded valence. Any questions on something like this? So what I'd like you guys to do is go through that review sheet, look at the ones with expanded valence, attempt them on your own, okay? If you're having a hard time with them, then either come to review session on Friday or we can go over one next Monday or something like that, okay?